Beginners, do you want to avoid injuries and actually make progress towards your health and fitness goals? Then listen up, because you can't afford to ignore these tips. The advice I'll be sharing throughout this video will teach you how to train smart and stay injury free from day one. So let's get started answering some of the most common questions that beginners have when it comes to preventing injuries during your workouts. How can I safely increase the intensity of my workouts without getting injured? Fantastic question. I'm gonna teach you something that's gonna stick with you from day one all the way to 10 years of lifting and I guarantee no one's ever told you this before. It is the most important metric, the most important piece of advice I tell absolutely everyone. Don't ever forget it. P-R-S-L. Those are the steps and that is the checklist that you must undergo before increasing weight. All of these steps will also guarantee that you increase intensity during your workouts, again, while preventing injury. Let's start at P, posture. Are you correctly set up? Are you correctly aligned? So you are targeting the working muscles that you aim to target for that exercise. For example, a lat pull down. Are you tucked all the way into your pelvis? Are your feet nice and flat? Is your torso correctly positioned? Are your hands correctly positioned? Then comes range of motion. Are you going through the entire range of motion for that exercise? Are you going through the full flexion and extension? Then comes stability. I like to say stability and control. Are you maximizing tempo? Are you in control of the weight or is the weight in control of you? Are you maximizing time under tension? Then finally comes L, load. Before increasing weight, you can see there are three things that you must do to increase intensity, three things that you must do to prevent risk before increasing load. The majority of the people jump all the way to L without having a care in the world about stability and control, range of motion, and posture. At the same time, use the principle called progressive overload. It is basically exactly what I just explained. From week to week, as you incorporate and perform the same exercises in your workouts, are you in some way, shape or form progressing? This can come in a form of frequency, volume, reps, tempo, time under tension, rest, technique, mind to muscle contraction, weight, the list goes on. Both of these methods will guarantee that your body safely adapts over time and safely improves over time while significantly reducing the risk of injury that is associated with sudden or dramatic changes and increases in workload during your workouts. What's the best way to know that I'm using the correct form and technique? Definitely start by learning each exercise with light weights or no weights at all. I would also suggest that you stick between 15 and 30 repetitions. This is in order for you to maximize control and all the essentials when it comes to setting up, technique, posture, and dismounting from each exercise. I would suggest and recommend that you also record your exercises from time to time in order to pinpoint areas for improvement. If you're unsure, that's why coaches are there to pinpoint areas for you. Is warming up and cooling down necessary? Absolutely. This is non-negotiable. It's equivalent to you turning on your car and turning the ignition on on a super cold morning and going pedal to the metal down the highway. As you can imagine, that's not gonna end well. Imagine your body is the engine, is your car on that cold morning. That's how you are prior to every single workout. Warming up increases your heart rate from normal levels, improves blood flow towards your working muscles, increases flexibility, and overall improves and prepares your body for the beating that you're about to put it through. Cooling down is the opposite of this, in where you reduce and lower your breathing and heart rate back to normal levels, reduce muscle stiffness and tightness, and of course, significantly aid in recovery. Skipping either of these will most definitely increase your risk of injury and muscle soreness. Can stretching prevent injuries? A sort of different but similar question. Again, yes, regular stretching is gonna improve your flexibility, range of motion, overall improve your posture and significantly reduce your risk of injury. Incorporate dynamic stretching 
before your workouts in order to prepare your muscles and static stretching after your workouts in order to aid in recovery. So yes, absolutely. How do I avoid lifting too much weight and potentially hurting myself? Well, avoid ego lifting. This means trying to lift more weight than you can currently handle in order to either impress others or get an ego boost. What you should be doing instead, as I mentioned earlier, lift weights that allow you to maintain proper posture, range of motion, stability and control, and overall form. A gradual increase in weight as you get stronger over time through the principle of progressive overload is what's going to guarantee that you maintain steady progress while also preventing the risk of injury. What are the key signs that I'm lifting too much weight? Well, look, this is a pretty in-depth and pretty broad answer. So I'm going to focus on beginners, beginners and novices. If you find that you sacrifice form, you sacrifice technique, posture, range of motion, stability and control in order to complete a lift, then you are lifting too much weight. If you are struggling excessively and instead of feeling the exercise in your muscles, you are feeling it in your joints or during the exercise, you might feel some sort of pain or some sort of irritability, then you are lifting too much weight. If you complete a set and you require greater than two minutes of rest, or in some cases, greater than three minutes of rest at the absolute maximum for beginners and novices, then you are lifting too much weight. Yes, the principle of technical failure does apply for the last couple of reps, but if you exceed technical failure and your technique falters, your form falters, you are lifting too much weight. Wait, go back to the beginning, have a listen to that again. And if any of those apply to you, if any of those were ticked off, then you are lifting too much weight. Should I avoid certain exercises to prevent injuries? I would say rather than avoiding exercises altogether, ask yourself these three questions. Do I aim to compete in bodybuilding? Do I aim to compete in strength competitions? Do I aim to compete in Olympic lifting? If you answered no to all of these, and your goal is just to be healthy and fit, then yes, in that sense, you can avoid those particular specific exercises. And yes, while it's true that some exercises might carry a higher risk of injury if performed incorrectly, like the barbell deadlift, barbell squat, or conventional barbell chest press, if you just gradually increase weight over time and gradually improve and master your technique, you've got nothing to worry about. You've got nothing to stress over. So in a sense, yes, if you said no to those first three questions, but in a sense, no, it doesn't really matter as long as you are incorporating the principles of progressive overload, slowly increasing weight and mastering technique over time. Is it normal to feel pain during my workouts? There's a massive difference between pain and discomfort. The majority of people feel discomfort. That's things like muscle burn, muscle soreness as you progress in your workouts, and even your muscle fibers tearing during your reps or during your sets. That's completely normal, that's completely common. Where red flags begin to raise is when you have sharp and persistent pain in particular areas, your joints, under your armpits, or your rotator cuffs, or your neck, if you're doing an overhead shoulder press, is a perfect example. Filtering out and understanding the differences between pain and discomfort is absolutely crucial, because if you decide to push through and persist through pain, that can most definitely lead to more serious injuries. For the most part, the most common Pain is like a strain or an overworked joint, an overworked rotator cuff, an overworked muscle. When you have correctly identified that you have persistent pain that isn't going away, stop your workout, go home and take three full rest days away from your workouts. If it persists and reaches past seven days, then it's serious. Definitely seek medical guidance at that point. But usually within three days, you'll be fine. At the worst case, seven days. 
For me, I've never ever had pain last more than seven days, and that was a significant neck strain. At that point, if it exceeds seven days, you know it's serious. Is it normal to feel pain after a workout? This one is different. This is called DOMS, delayed onset of muscle soreness, completely different from pain. At this stage, the likelihood that it's pain is very unlikely. I would say 99 times out of 100, it's just DOMS. Let's say you complete a massive, heavy leg day, especially as a beginner to novice, you're most likely just feeling torn muscle fibers, which is a direct result of lifting, and a direct result of your muscle fibers repairing and coming back bigger and stronger than before. Now, whether you feel DOMS or don't feel DOMS, that isn't necessarily a direct indicator whether or not you had or didn't have a good workout. As a beginner to novice, the likelihood of you feeling DOMS is significantly greater in comparison to someone who's an intermediate, advanced, or athlete, especially someone at my training age. But feeling DOMS is normal. If you feel instead a sharp pain, a sharp persistent pain, the same recommendation is going to apply like the previous question. Give yourself three days, up to seven days. If that pain consists past seven days, definitely seek guidance. How many days per week should I rest to prevent injuries? An absolute whopper question, a 10 out of 10 question. Keep in mind, the recommendations and requirements for beginners and novices is completely different for any other training age. So listen up if you fall into this category. Within 72 hours, don't train the same muscle group. So if I train chest today and I'm a beginner, I'm not going to train it within 72 hours again. Also, at the very minimum, you need two full rest days per week. No more than four full rest days per week. So keep between that bracket. Implementing both of these strategies will guarantee that your muscles come back repaired and recovered so that when you train them again, you can then tear your muscle fibers again and rinse and repeat. They come back bigger and stronger than before. That's how you build your muscles. If you decide that you want to train them again within 72 hours, you are doing yourself an injustice. You are cooking a cooked steak. What happens when you cook a cooked steak? It burns, ladies and gentlemen. And at that stage, you are completely and utterly worse off if you were to just instead rest. Of course, also implement seven to nine hours of sleep consistently per night. In my opinion, as beginners, now that you are introducing and implementing weight training into your lifestyle, I would say eight hours consistently per night. Making up for sleep on the weekend does not exist. Consistently, eight hours per night, at the very minimum, seven hours per night. That pretty much wraps up the entire video. If you learned something from today's video, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, comment below, and if you want to debate me or ask any questions down in the comment section below, feel free to. I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.